In this video, we're going to take a look at the sums and differences of functions. Now before I go into too much detail, I want you to consider the three graphs of the functions f of x, g of x, and h of x. Using these graphs, I want you to complete the table below for the x values from negative 2 to positive 4 to find the y values of f of x, g of x, and h of x. I also want you to answer the three questions below. So I want you to pause the video and then afterwards we'll come back and then we'll compare the answers. So pause the video now. I have filled in the table with the corresponding y values from the graph. So for example, when x is negative 2, we have f of negative 2 to be negative 3. F of negative, so f of negative 1 is negative 2. When x is 0, f of x is f of 0 is negative 1, and so on. So what do you notice about the relationship between each value of h of x, so the blue graph, and the corresponding values of f of x and g of x? So if you look in the table, hopefully you saw that I can get the numbers for h of x by adding f of x and g of x together. So h of x is a sum of f of x and g of x. The next question asks you to determine the equation in slope-intercept form of each of the functions graphed in step one. So recall that we use our y-intercept for our b value, and then we can count our slope as rise over run. So for f of x, the equation is x minus one. For g of x, the red graph, we can see has a negative slope, it has a y-intercept of three, and a slope of negative two. So we have negative two x plus three. And then h of x has a y-intercept of two and a negative slope of one. So h of x equals negative x plus two. So using our equations, um, the next question is to write the equation of a new function, which we'll call s of x, that represents the sum of the functions f of x and g of x. And when you did this, hopefully you notice that you got negative x plus two, which happened to also be the same as h of x. And the reason is because when we add the numbers, f of x and g of x, we actually got the y values for h of x. And that's the same as adding the two functions together as well, without the numbers, but just algebraically. So x minus one plus negative two x plus three is going to give us negative x plus two. So this leads us to finding the sum and difference of functions. So you can form new functions by performing different operations. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at adding and subtracting functions. So when you add functions together, we can also write this as f plus g in brackets and then of x, which is really f of x plus g of x, and then f minus g in brackets of x is equal to f of x minus g of x. So let's take a look at some examples. Given f of x equals 2x plus 3 and g of x equals x minus 1, determine the combined functions. So f plus g in brackets is simply the same as f of x plus g of x. So what I'm going to do is take 2x plus 3 and then add that together with x minus 1. And here we have 3x and then plus 2. Now we can do the same thing with subtraction. So we'll do this example down here. So here we have f of x equals 3x squared minus 1 and g of x equals f of x plus 2. So the question's asking us now to find f minus g when the x value is negative two. I can do this in two different ways. I can actually add, or sorry, subtract the functions first and then plug in my negative two, or you can plug in the negative two right away. So it's really up to you and your preference. So this is the same as f of negative two minus g of negative two. So if I plug this in right away, I wanna get three times negative two all squared minus one. 
and then minus 5 times negative 2 plus 2. So in this first bracket, I have 3 times 4, and then minus 1, which is going to be 11. And then I have minus 5 times negative 2, plus 2, which is going to be negative 8. So then I have 11 plus 8, which is going to equal 19. In the above investigation, we added two functions together. So let's take a look at what happens when we subtract two functions. So consider the function f of x equals to the absolute value of x and g of x equals to x minus 5. So determine the equation of the function h of x equals to f minus g of x. So we can say that h of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus, in brackets, x minus 5. And let's remove those brackets so we get absolute of x minus x and then plus 5. So I want you to sketch the graphs of f of x, g of x, and h of x on the same set of the coordinate axis to be able to compare all three. So let's do a table of values. We're going to just use the values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and we'll do the same for g of x. And plugging in negative 2, because it's an absolute, all the values become positive. And for g of x, when we plug in negative 2, we're going to get negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, and negative 3. Now, I didn't actually have to do it this way. I could have actually just plugged in negative 2 to 2 into the absolute value of x minus x plus 5. But I just wanted to be able to compare all three. So I'm going to create my third table. Now, notice that the x's all stay the same but it's my h of x that's going to change. So according to here, I could actually plug in negative two to positive two into my h of x function, or knowing that h of x is equal to f of x minus g of x, I can just simply also take the y values and then also subtract them. So either way, I get the h of x values of nine, seven, five, five and then five. So notice that um, I can go two minus negative seven to get nine, one minus negative six to get seven and so on. Now this is a little bit interesting here where all the numbers here from zero to two, they always are five. So let's take a look at the graph and see what happens. So the absolute value is gonna be a V-shaped graph starting at zero, zero as its vertex. And it's going to be a V with slopes of positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, and the line is going to have a Y intercept of negative 5. And then if you can use your points if you like, so we get negative 2 is going to be negative 7. Oops. Negative 1, negative 6. 1 and negative 4, and so on. All right, sorry, it's not very straight. Let's try to make it a little bit better here. All right, and then h of x, graphing this one, it's going to be interesting. So we have negative 2 and then positive 9, negative 1 and 7, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, and so on. So if we actually picked more and more values, so let's say we pick 3, we will see that this will always be a horizontal line right here.
Now, if you take a look at the graph of all three of them, you can kind of see why that is. So because we're taking the difference, the difference from here, the blue graph to the red graph, it's the smallest when x is zero, and then it increases dramatically, uh, or not dramatically, it increases as x gets smaller and smaller. However, when x is greater or equal to zero, we can see that the difference here between the blue graph and the red graph, between f of x and g of x, it's always going to be the same. So no matter which at which x value I choose, we can see that the difference or the distance stays the same. So let's actually comment on that here. So the difference stays the same when x is greater or equal to zero. All right, so the last part here, uh, the next thing question is to state the domain and range of h of x. So the domain is all real numbers. And the range, we can see that the smallest value is positive 5. So we can see that y is greater or equal to 5. The last question I have for you is a good thinking question. Is f minus g of x equal to g minus f of x? Now, unlike addition, well, neither, in the other direction we add, whether f of x plus g of x or reverse it to g of x plus f of x, it will be the same. However, when we subtract, we know that it's not the same because if I say 1 minus 2, we know that's negative 1 but two minus one is equal to positive one. So you can think of g minus f of x as factoring out the negative, and this being f minus g of x. So if you compare f minus g of x to the negative f minus g of x, we can see that they're not the same, but actually what's happening is that the g minus f of x is a reflection of f minus g of x, and that's going to be over the x-axis. So no, they're not the same. g minus f of x, oops. So g minus f of x is the reflection of f minus g of x over the x-axis, which is actually quite interesting um, to note and to look at the graph as well. And you can try this on your own by taking g of x and then minusing f of x to see if it's actually um, a reflection of this black graph. And you will find that actually it will be.